so co-opted. The general public, whatever that is, does in fact have a tendency to conflate economics and finance in the course of panicky conversations about money and the lack thereof. But it just isn't possible to understand this current crisis without clearly distinguishing the two terms. My guest this morning brings a checkered career path to the problem. William Daniels worked with Buckminster Fuller and has studied Bucky's work extensively. Bucky is the inspiration for his understanding of the true economic condition of our single human family. William Daniels is a, uh, an economic writer and thinker, and uh, he brings a lifetime of experience to the task of sorting this all out. Good morning, William. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning, Chris. Thank you so much for inviting me. First off, let me ask you, um, I do understand that, that you, you've worked with Buckminster Fuller. Taking that as a, your, as a background, a basis, can you distinguish for our listeners what we talk about, we talk about economics and finance and why it's important to distinguish the two terms. Well, if you look up the definition of economics in Webster, it talks about the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. I like to use the word use. So production, distribution, use of goods and services. There's not a word in there about money or finance. So when we look at the two then, well, what is finance re relative to economics? What it turns out to be is one of the tools that we use to manage an economy. It is not the economy. If we look at them independently, so examine economics, uh, what makes economics work, and if we examine finance and how that relates to economics, it becomes clear that the fundamental principles of economics are different and are work uh, 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 they're different from the fundamental principles of finance. And the fundamental principles of finance deliberately suppress economic production. It seems um, in, in some ways that we've fallen into this, this, um, this uh, problem of understanding because we tend to see these things in terms of a two-dimensional model uh, and we're actually working with a three-dimensional model because we have to take people into account. I think Buckminster Fuller himself would uh, tend to see these things in three-dimensional terms. What I'd like, to you, I'd like to ask you to do very briefly in the last few minutes, moments that we do have is uh, talk a little bit about this so-called jobless recovery. Is this yet another term that we've been tossing around without really understanding it? Absolutely, Chris. Uh, the whole point, well, one of the fundamental points of economic activity is we get animals and machines to replace human labor. That's the point of it. They're called labor-saving devices. So it's actually good news, and we have been so extraordinarily successful at getting machines and animals to do our work for us that we're to the point now we really should be retiring a good portion of all the wor all the human beings doing work. Well, that's that's economics. Finance, however, says that when we replace a human being with an animal or a machine you get cut off from your life support. So goods and services are no longer coming to you because you aren't earning your living. Um, th 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 it's a conundrum that cannot be resolved with financial systems because financial systems are based on the idea that, that life support is scarce. And when things get too abundant, when we are able to produce more than we could possibly need, what we do is, is cut the supply in order to keep the price up. So, well, that's how it works. That's the bell curve in nature. Every population in nature. This is how uh, a, that would be a permaculture way of seeing uh, markets and financial systems, economies. Well, finance deliberately cuts off life support th that we have pr economically produced. Um, we have to we have to leave it at that point. We'd like to invite William Daniels, my guest this morning, to return to talk more about these these terms, finance, economies, and of course what's going on in this so called recovery. It seems more like a recovery for markets than for human Definitely. beings. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, William. Thank and you too. And I would like to invite you back to Air Cascadia to talk about some of these issues as they come along down through the mass media pipeline. We would love to. Would love right, to. Thank you, so Chris. Much, then.